Even though the FBI, former director of the CDC and the head of the Department of Energy all think that COVID likely came from a lab, there's a new story in town. Yep, it came from a raccoon dog. Yeah, you know, raccoon dogs who you've never ever heard of before and haven't just been made up to distract you from it definitely coming from a lab. No, it was raccoon dogs. Or someone left the lab, went to a market, petted a raccoon dog, got bit. Just stop talking about it coming from a lab. You know who that would make responsible, don't you? Hello there, you 6.3 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. Together we abide, together we grow, together we can awaken the great spirit within us and confront these systems of corruption that surround us in every direction. Turn on the notification bell right now and subscribe to our channel. We make new content every single day because every single day there's a new story to tell you and we've got to bring that stuff to you and I want you to see it. It's so important that you stay connected to us every single day. Otherwise, how would you know that, yeah, this just in, it did come from a wet market, not from the Wuhan laboratory of coronaviruses as you might have started to suspect from the first bloody time you ever heard those words said. No, put that out of your mind. It's come from the stinky old wet market, this time because of a thing called raccoon dogs that you've never ever heard of before. Once again, an attempt to focus your attention on unusual animals like that thing called a pangolin or whatever the hell it's called, instead of irresponsible scientific practices leading to an outbreak, which would be costly and would diminish the authority of certain institutions were it true. And I'm certainly not saying it is. Not on this platform, baby. The East Asian raccoon dog, a relative of the fox, may hold the key to the origins of COVID-19. What I will say is the raccoon dog is well named. It really does look like it's a bit raccoon and a bit dog. It should have its own cartoon. Ha! <laughs> what adventures are we going to get into today? I know. Why don't we go cough over some people that work in that laboratory? What's it called? I don't know. I can't read. I'm just a <coughs> a raccoon dog, I just exist to create distraction. Don't look over there. <coughs> According to a group of scientists quoted in the Atlantic magazine. The strongest evidence yet that it came from an animal. Look, we found something. Thank God. Something that might distract us from the fact that it probably came from a laboratory in which the people that were engaged heavily in organizing the response to the pandemic were also invested in by the NCIH and EcoHealth Alliance, which will be super embarrassing. There's this thing called a raccoon dog if we start inventing new animals or just plucking them out of the forest. The team says their new analysis of samples taken at a Wuhan market in the early days of the pandemic. Oh, they're taking samples. Why don't I get on and see what's going on at the Wuhan Institute of Virology? That's where the real scrutiny needs to go. Look at how some information is reported. Look at how other information is ignored. That shows you that there's a superstructure, that the media is a subset of a bunch of other interests and particular stories flow down and other stories get knocked back. That's all we're saying. Is a really strong in indication that infected animals were there, including raccoon dogs. <laughs> raccoon dogs? Never heard of them before. Why are they suddenly in the news? Raccoon dogs, they may look cute, but they're actually real little bastards. If you have one of them come near you, be careful. It may have a new and potentially lucrative disease in its mouth that if you get it, suddenly Alba Borla is looking a little taller. The findings support the theory that COVID-19 jumped from animals to humans. Look at this graph. How intelligent do they think you are and I am? to give us a graph like this. What is that graph going Over here, we have a raccoon dog, and then we got a big, giant coronavirus. They're not actually that big, because otherwise we'd see them. We'd be able to knock them away with tennis rackets. Not Djokovic, that son of a gun. He better not go near him. He'd probably die instantaneously. But it's gone from raccoon dog, see there, to an inexplicably naked lady. The graph's not giving you any new information, is it? Hold on, how's it getting from the dog to the lady? Well, you know, it's traveling through air on that thing. Oh, okay, thank Thanks for the news. But researchers say it is not a smoking gun. It's not conclusive because you can't prove the chain of events for how an animal got infected. To get more conjecture then, even in the news report they're admitting, here's some stuff we're essentially giving you to dilute your certainty that the Wuhan Institute of Virology are culpable for this leak and all of the connotations that would lead you to reflect on about the way that that industry is regulated, the subsequent response, the indemnity given to pharmaceutical companies subsequently, the position of Anthony Fauci during the entire pandemic, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and where they invest their money. Forget all of that and look at this raccoon dog and this in inexplicably naked lady. You can't even technically prove the raccoon dog was infected. All they 
they're essentially saying is, hey, would you like to see something what's a bit like a raccoon and a bit like a dog? Yeah, I would actually. Good. Would you also like us to take the heat off an emerging idea that makes the pharmaceutical industry and several government agencies culpable for one of the biggest disasters in recent history? And what do you think about the second one? Raccoon dog. Raccoon dog. <laughs> the raccoon dogs themselves weren't actually sampled. Exactly. They haven't done any tests on the raccoon dog. Sorry, is there such a thing as raccoon dogs? I don't know, to be honest. It just sounded cute. It's too early in the process to put this on the news. Look, can you cobble together a graphic of a little white silhouette dog, a little white silhouette lady, a bloody great big coronavirus, and a double-ended arrow? Oh, yeah, we can do that, sir. Okay, let's call that the news. China has been widely criticized for not allowing an independent investigation into the origins of the virus. They won't allow an independent investigation. They're just trotting out the raccoon dog, just ushering out a, a pack, a herd. What do you call them? Well, we don't actually know what the collective noun for raccoon dogs is. Do we know what caused this coronavirus pandemic? We basically do, yeah. But have another look at this cute gaggle of raccoon dogs. It might not be gaggle. This new analysis sure to fuel the heated and often political debate. Do you sometimes think that the news has gone wrong when it's a heated and political debate? There's just two raccoon dogs. What? Sorry? What are we doing now? Keep walking towards the camera. Maybe they'll give us a biscuit. In a classified report to Congress, the Department of Energy concluded with low confidence that COVID-19 leaked from a Wuhan lab. The FBI also believes the lab may be the source. So it could be raccoon dogs. Catch them now before their new animated movie franchise starts. Or it could be this. Top scientific advisors told Congress earlier this month there's mounting evidence COVID leaked from the Wuhan lab and accused Dr. Anthony Fauci of trying to cover up the claims because they didn't fit his narrative. Experts, including a former Biden staffer and Donald Trump's CDC director, testified to the House subcommittee investigating COVID that taxpayer-funded gain of function likely caused the virus that came from a Chinese facility. So it's either taxpayer-funded gain of function research or those adorable dogs. I'll leave it to you <laughs> to decide. Obviously, one of those conclusions makes culpable a real intriguing set of powerful interests. And the other one is a cute dog thing. Without sponsors, we simply wouldn't be able to make this show. Today's sponsor is a glorious one. The air! It ain't pure enough. If all home air purifiers are the same, why did the US Department of Defense select EnviroCleanse to protect and purify the air on board your Navy ships? Because EnviroCleanse advanced mineral technology goes beyond ordinary HEPA filters to destroy airborne illness causing cold and flu viruses, including COVID. Perhaps if they'd invested in one of these little guys in a certain laboratory in Wuhan, we'd have all had a different couple of years. Mm. This is how you help stop colds and flu from taking your whole family down. Down. This is how you destroy allergy inflaming toxins and mold from the air your family breathes. In fact, this hospital grade technology is so powerful that it promises far fewer colds and allergies and better sleep. Visit ekpure.com and use the code BRAND for 10% off your EnviroCleanse home air purification unit. You'll also receive a free air quality monitor plus fast free shipping. That's $150 saving. That's ekpure.com code Brand. Now let's go and see what that other version of me is saying about bringing down the government. And now a former CDC director whose name sounds too much like a Hollywood actor. We had to really uh, seriously go after the fact that it came from the lab and they knew that that was how I was thinking, although I thought we had to go after both hypotheses. And I was told later, uh, I didn't know I was excluded. I didn't know there was a February 1st conference call until the Freedom of Information came out with the emails and I was quite upset as the CDC director that I was exclu excluded from those discussions. Well, what Robert Redfield says is interesting, isn't it? That there are two hypotheses, investigate both hypotheses and then maybe draw conclusions. Isn't that like what science was when you were literally at school? Okay, we are gonna study only one hypothesis. What about the lab leak one? Listen, let me show you these dogs. They look like they're wearing a Zorro mask. Surely that is more interesting than a bunch of stuff in a boring oh, oh, laboratory. Zorro mask. Why would they do this? 
because I had a different point of view and I was told they made a decision that they would keep this confidential until they came up with a single narrative, which I will argue is antithetical to science. Robert Redfield's explanation sounds eerily similar to what we've all long suspected actually happened, that they had a preference for a particular perspective and promoted a lot of information that led to that perspective while excluding information that might challenge it. And all the time that they were saying follow the science, what they actually meant was follow the science that we're giving you access to because we don't want you looking at this science because because it's a counter narrative that we cannot accommodate because if we accommodate it we will at some point become culpable for this entire pandemic allegedly some democratic representatives at the hearings warned that accusing Fauci of ill motives would further erode trust in government health officials threatening public health if you accuse this person of being dishonest are you not aware that that will cause people not to trust that person yeah but what if they shouldn't trust that person because he's excluding important data from the international conversation Conversation. Listen, do you know what a raccoon dog is? Get one in, get one in. Look how, ow, you little bastard. Oh, God, wait, hold on. Nope, nothing's wrong with me. It's not done anything. Now, I'm just gonna go get myself a Band-Aid from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Excuse me a second. <coughs> oh, God, I ain't feeling too good. That goddamn raccoon dog! Maybe Fauci's coming round to the lab leak theory now that the evidence is mounting, and surely he won't present some sort of bizarre magic bullet version of a lab leak theory to make it sound absolutely ridiculous and exculpate himself from blame. And on this theory of a lab leak, uh, I, I, you know, I've been wondering this. Do we have any idea how that would even work? Well, yeah, I've got an idea. They didn't have proper safety procedures and it got out of the lab either via a person or through a faulty air vent or through a variety of other means or through an infected animal. All sorts of ways. But what about you, Fauci? Have you got some sort of weird way that it could have happened so that no one that you've been financially or otherwise involved with will be in any way to blame? Yeah, that's a very good question, Jim. Because it enables me to issue some propaganda, which I will now do, no matter how implausible it may sound. And if you don't like it, wait, get, get the raccoon dog, get the raccoon dog. I've got something very cute to distract you with. A lab leak could be that someone was out in the wild. Yeah, they're out in the wild. Maybe looking for different types of viruses in bats. Yeah, they will be doing that. That is part of their job, actually, because that's what's made so many people speculate it came from there, because they do go and get bats with coronavirus and then accelerate and enhance the functions of that virus. And potentially, maybe something could go wrong, but carry on. Got infected, went into a lab, and was being studied in the lab, and then it came out of the lab. But if that's the definition of a lab leak, Jim, then that still is a natural occurrence. Still doesn't lead to me or any of my affiliates or anyone I've received royalties from being in any way culpable. Get the raccoon dog, get the raccoon dog. I've already seen the raccoon dog. Shit mouse? No, I'm sorry. Tit frog? There are no lab leaks that have led to pandemics. Oh, oh, I can think of one. So there have been accidents in a lab that happens intermittently. We've had experiences with that in modern times recently. Like 2019? But there have never been a situation where a virus escaped from a lab that's a brand new virus. Do you notice Anthony Fauci's willingness to investigate meandering theories around raccoon dogs and people popping off into the woods to get a bat and maybe dropping it on the bus on the way home? But his unwillingness to accept that there have previously been lab leaks that haven't led to entirely original viruses. And I suppose if you're doing gain of function, they wouldn't be entirely original, would they? Because they're being amended and adapted. But he's never willing to investigate roots of analysis that might lead to personal or institutional culpability. What a coincidence. The only thing that can make this whole situation worse is if you found out that you paid for it twice. The US taxpayers may have been double billed for coronavirus research grants in Wuhan, feared to have started the pandemic, a damning investigation has claimed. Diane Cutler, former federal investigator for the House of Energy and Commerce Committee, found evidence that points to the potential theft of tens of millions of government funds. Former federal investigator Diane Cutler spent two decades combating white collar crime and health care fraud. During the pandemic, Cutler turned her attention to US government grants. That's interesting that white collar crime could have been occurring during that pandemic period. But I suppose then there would have been a massive wealth transfer and newly empowered private entities being granted legal indemnity. 
Wait a minute! Records reviewed by CBS News indicate the U.S. government may have paid twice for projects at the Wuhan labs through the National Institutes of Health and the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID. This included possible medical supplies, equipment, travel, and salaries. Whose salaries exactly did you pay twice? Well, we only paid it once, but once was raccoon and the other one was dog. We didn't know that was the same little guy. So what I found so far is uh, evidence that points to double billing potential theft of government funds. It is concerning, mm -hmm. especially since it involves dangerous pathogens and risky research. So there you have it. The story goes on. How on earth did this coronavirus pandemic begin? Was it in the wet market? Was it with the raccoon dogs? Was it out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology? <laughs> Perhaps we'll never ever truly know, particularly not if the mainstream media keep underwriting and amplifying confusing stories that have literally no empirical evidence attached to them. No one's done any tests on them dogs, no one can prove that it came from those raccoon dogs. The whole thing sounds like a rather adorable and colourful distraction. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you remember, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Then you'll know every day we make another one of these things just for you. We're more than a media channel now. We are a movement and without you, we're pretty static. You are the fuel that we run on. So stay close to us, stay connected. And more important than any of that, please stay free. All right. The beginning bit of the pandemic, it was like really nice. It was about a month where it was like a free holiday. And I thought, this is going to be beautiful. That spirit didn't last that long, did it? <laughs> you won't get addicted to that. You take it in a jungle. I'm not going to not get addicted to something just because there's a toucan nearby. <laughs> you should not let your children look at screens. Now I've got them, I'm like, oh, stick Netflix on and give it a f***ing Rolo, will ya? <laughs> That clip was from my new special, Brandemic, only available on Locals. You can buy the special for $20 or you can become a member of our community to get both the special and all my Locals content for one whole year.